In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. How much can we know about the Creator? Does the Bible reveal his intentions toward his human creatures? The young and the old are interested in these questions, and in this program, the Bible family, in their own unique way, will bring many answers to our attention. The Bible family consists of a widowed mother and a grandfather and the children. Here they are. Hi, I'm LaVon. This is my little sister, Christiana. Arby. I have a good idea. Let's go Charlene. Ice cream fit. And I'm having a triple Risa. Well, you can have that. <laughs> and mother. This will give you a little idea of what to expect as the program unfolds. <laughs> Gosh, just when it got so interesting, what happened? I don't know. The electricity's on. Mom, something happened to the TV set. Let me see. Can you fix it, Mom? Oh, I don't know, honey. Did you try a little button? I did. Well, I guess there's nothing else we can do than to call the television repairman. But he won't come now. No. Why can't you fix it, Mom? Oh, honey, I don't know how all those tubes and wires work in the TV set. Only the man who make and repair the set might know. You know, Mom, I've always wondered how it works that we see the people here on the TV screen when they're really sometimes thousands of miles away, and there's not even a wire or anything to bring them to us. When I was little, I thought the people were right inside the TV. Silly boy. Mom... How come we can see the people when they're so far away? Oh, my. All these questions. Well, do you know, I don't even know the answers myself. It always seemed to me just like a miracle, and probably that is the best answer. People know how to make television sets, but the basic secret just how they work has not been understood. No one can truly define electrical or electronic energies. That is a secret which belongs to God. He has allowed men to harness all these energies, but he has never revealed to men just how they function. You know, Mom, I remember how Daddy used to fix that radio. You know, Mom, I really miss him. I do, too. Oh, so do we all, honey. Well, children, I guess it's time to go up to bed. We won't wait till Grandma comes home. Come on. Get washed we'll up. Here pretty soon. Brush yeah. your teeth and getting late. Come on. Right. Grandpa might be very late tonight. Okay. Good night, Mom. Good night, Mom. Good night, children. Good night, Mom. Dear Bible family, thank you for the wonderful book, God's Promises Come True. The children just love it and are understanding the simple language so well. Oh, hi, Dad. Hi, hi, hi. Hi, hi. Grandpa's here. Hi, honey. Oh, good hi, to see you. Grandpa, hi, Grandpa. Hello. Yeah. That's a calamity in this house. <laughs> are you sure the current's on and the switches are right? I've been watching that lady. It seems like it's been getting tired. I hope it didn't say goodbye. <laughs> but uh, anyway, tomorrow morning we'll get it fixed so you can all have your TV, TV programs again. Good. Don't worry about it. That's good. Okay, children, I think now it's time to go to bed, okay? Good night. Good night. Good night. Are you ready, Risa? Come on, honey. I'm coming. Yeah, 
sure. He always takes her along. Well, they'll be back in a little while. And they have a real surprise for all of you. Well, since I couldn't go along, they can just keep their surprise. Now, what has come over you, Abby? I'll do my homework. Always read stuff. There you are. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now, we've got this in case that big television goes out. This is for the playroom. But remember, the mother tells you if you can have both on at once. Now, wait, where's R.B.? R.B., come on down. I'm busy. What'd he say? He says busy. busy Go ahead, open it up, children. Okay. Open it up. You go now. Oh, hey, it's new TV. Charlene, what happened to Arby? He got jealous. Jealous of whom? Of Risa. I guess he wanted to go with you, Grandpa. Oh, my. Charlene, would you go up and see Arby and ask him to come down? If he says no, say Grandpa wants him to do a favor for him. Will you okay. please? Father, I'm surprised at Abby. I know. When you think you're not wanted, it hurts. Yes. If it's real or if it's imagined, it still hurts. I think I should do something special with Arby this weekend to show him we love him just like all the others. Oh, Father, that would be wonderful. You know, I think he misses his dad so much. The two of them have been so very close. I thought of something that may help. I just sent for him. Well, I think I better get my dinner ready and take that sewing out of here. Hi, Arby. Come in, son. I'm glad to see you. Arby, when you get old, your eyes get tired. And it's very good to have young friends who has good eyesight. Will you read me something? Do I have to? No, not really, but I'd appreciate it. I got thinking about trouble in the world, men hating other men, men hurting other men, and men that have a lot not helping those that don't, and, and men taking from those that have, and I thought, what started all this? And I thought of the book, God's Promises Come True, and, and I found something in that. If you read it, I'd like you to. Read it very loud. Will you please, Arby? All right. Ah, oh, thank you. But you know, there is a sad part to this story. Lucifer became proud and jealous. I just hope that none of you ever get that way. If some of the children have more good things than you, be happy about it. Just say to yourself, I'm glad they have such nice things. If you think about it in the right way, you can be just as happy as they are. Try it and see if I'm not right. When boys and girls begin to feel jealous, they become unhappy and sullen. They pout and are cranky. And when their parents want them to do something, they sniffle and cry. R.B., as long as we live, we have to watch ourselves. Not to get jealous or envious. Not to hurt people and especially to help people. You know, Jesus said there is two great things we should always remember. One, we should love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength because God gives us life and everything. And the other, he said, was just as important to love our neighbors ourselves. R.B., if everybody in the world did that now, love their neighbors as themselves, there'd be no war, no poverty, It'd be a wonderful situation. God has promised that that will happen just the same in proper time. Okay, children, come off of supper now. I'm sorry, Grandpa. We all love you, Arby, very, very much. God bless you, son. Grandpa? 
Grandpa, you never had your regular walk today. I promise you I'm going to take it. And remember, R.B., this weekend, you and I are going to do something very special. Oh, boy! Grandpa, last night I saw the stars. I did too, Grandpa. Boy, I wish I had a telescope. Boy, how they twinkle. Like little balls of fire. Twinkle, twinkle, like a star. How I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high. Like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. How I wonder what you are. Christiana, they may look like little balls of fire, but they're really big worlds, even bigger than the earth we live on. You'll learn that in school. Did you and Levine see the Big Dipper last night? Yes, we did. And Levon and I were remarking how wonderfully these stars reflect the, the great wisdom and power of God in his creative work. Do you know how many stars there are, Grandpa? Well, R.B., some astronomers tell us they know how many there are to a degree. A very famed astronomer at Mount Palomar, Dr. Hubble, says in our galaxy, that's our grouping of stars, there are 100 billion suns. And he says there are unnumbered millions of those galaxies. That means there's billions and billions and billions of stars. Grandpa, you say there are billions of stars. How many is a billion? Well, a billion. That, that's a lot. Some years ago, I read where they had a budget of $80 billion for armaments of war in our country. And I got curious, and we calipered a little dollar bill, and we measured how many you'd have to have of these, going flat, no wrinkles in them, up as high as you could pile them, one billion. And it was over 63 miles high. Wow! And wow is right. And the Bible tells us that our wonderful creator made all these stars. And it says in beautiful language, he calleth them all by name. And not one faileth because of the greatness of his might. That means that not a star ever goes out of its orbit, but goes just in that path that God said it should go in. Gramps, I like the idea that all things with which we are surrounded, the stars above us and even ourselves, are creations of God. But I've been taught in school that this really isn't true that everything has come about by a process of what they call evolution. What do you think about this? I don't think it's true, Levon. What they don't emphasize in high school and college is that the evolution theory is something unproved. The word theory means that. So it hasn't been proven, it's not a fact. And I don't think it's true. But Gramps, what about those wonderful exhibits seen in museums? They give us the thought that evolution is pretty real. They show, for example, the whole series of fossil animals, starting with a very low form and working up the ladder of what they call evolution. Isn't that more than a theory? Father, I have promised Christiana and Risa that we would go downstairs and work with clay. So I guess we leave you for a little while. Come on, children. We'll see you later. Grandpa, I've heard that same idea at school. Isn't evolution really more than a theory? Not really. I saw a fossil exhibit like this over 40 years ago in San Diego. They started a very simple fossil skeleton, little. Next to that was one just a little bigger. It got bigger and bigger. However, uh, there are some, some reproductions so-called of eight men that are just imagination. There was one called the, the Javanese ape man that he looks at you and it scares you almost. It's supposed to be one of our ancestors. But it was found on the island of Java by Dr. Du Bois. And what he really found was a part of the skull, the jawbone, and 50 feet away, the, the, the uh, shattered thigh bone. And from these little pieces, with his imagination, he reconstructed this horrible looking thing he called our ancestor. And also there was one called the, the Piltdown Man that turned out to be just simply a fraud, but it had been in many textbooks, just the same. Gramps. Isn't it true that these fossils were arranged in order, just as they first appeared on Earth? No, not really. It's been established that sometimes the very first in these exhibits, in small ones, lived at the same time the big one did, the dinosaurs. So it has been really established that they didn't follow that particular sequence on the Earth, but that they were just here. But the, 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 um, 
exhibit makes you think that if you're not aware of these other facts. Well, that takes care of the fossil exhibits. And Levon, the Bible uses a very meaningful expression in its description of the God's work of creation. It says that all the various creations were after its kind. This indicates a fixity of species. And while there are great variety within the limits of each species, scientists have to admit that there's no evidence of a change of one species to another. There are certainly many kinds of dogs and many kinds of horses. That's right, but, but the horse doesn't change into a dog, nor a dog into a horse. The Bible makes it clear that man is the highest of these species, that he was created in the image of God. Gramps, what does that expression mean, in the image of God? Well, God gives us a good answer to that when in something he said to the prophet Job. He said this, Who hath put wisdom in the inward parts? Or who hath given understanding to the heart? Grandpa, the lower animal creations are governed largely by what we call instinct, aren't they? That's right. From the time of their birth, they seem to naturally follow a, a certain pattern. And while many of them can be trained to obey a certain uh, to a certain degree, the directives of the human masters, th there's no evidence that they really understand why. Certainly, as implied in the question asked Job, the lower animals do not possess a heart knowledge or mental appreciation of their existence or of their course of action. But with man, it's different. Well, man, to some extent at least, is able to reason. And it is this quality which we can properly speak of as being in the image of God. Man is able to reason to a great degree, from the known to the unknown. He knows that some things are right and, and other things are wrong. He has a conscience which is, is pricked when he does wrong and affords peace and contentment when he, of mind when he does right. Many of advanced theories concerning the supposed ascent of man from protoplasm to this present state, they've attempted to explain how what has brought about the various changes in the anatomy of animals in the revolutionary process which has led to man, but no one, no one has even attempted to answer the question put to Job, which was, who hath put wisdom in the inward parts of man? Or who hath given understanding to the heart? Levon, let's join the others. Okay. I think you have to take a little more water. Your clay is getting dry. Look at my dog, Grandpa. Oh, that's Look at my good. Grandpa, Grandpa. They're nice. very good. They're very good. Grandpa, you would like maybe to make a horse or a talking. dog or something for us. Here's a little piece of clay. Not really. When I was a child, I couldn't even make good mud pies. <laughs> oh, I, I think it's good they're doing it. We may have a future Michelangelo here. You never know. <laughs> it might well be. We sure all enjoy doing it. You know, there's only just one thing a little disappointing about it, and that is how hard we try to shape a piece of clay to look like a little squirrel here or a little rabbit or like this little boy. We can't give it life. Well, that's true. Only the Creator could do that. To take a piece of clay and shape it into human form reminds us of what the Bible says concerning what the Creator did do in the creation of the first man. I wonder who can tell us what that story is as the Bible tells it. I think I can, Grandpa. The Bible says that God formed man out of the dust of the earth, breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. How right you are, Charlene. Gramps, was it really just the air that God breathed into Adam that made him alive? Yes, Levon, it was. It says the breath of life. But the Bible gives importance to the blood. It says the life is in the blood. It makes me think of being to the doctor some time back and said to me, I've got to check out your trucking system. I says, my what? He says, your trucking system. He says, your blood is a transportation system. It's just like you had a truck come to your house every day with food and, and water and air and dropped it off and took away the trash. He said your blood goes to your lungs and gets oxygen. And then it goes down to the liver and gets some chemicals your liver's made and do other 
ductless glands and gets things they have made, goes to small intestines and gets food that you've taken in, the nutriment, and then it goes to each one of the cells and drops off the oxygen and food it needs, picks up the trash, goes back to the kidneys, kidneys gets rid of some of the trash, then it comes back to the lungs and you get rid of carbon dioxide, which is more trash, and takes in more oxygen, just keeps going around and around. And, and interestingly enough, if I remember correctly, it was only about 400 years ago that man realized that the blood was a, had a circulatory system. Now we notice the prominence the Bible gives to the, the breath of life. Now the blood transports food, air, and water. Now man can do without food probably 30 days, yeah. without water some days, but if he doesn't have the breath of life or oxygen, in three minutes his brain begins to die, and a few minutes after that he's dead. And just think, Levon, thousands of years ago, our Heavenly Father put in the Bible two simple statements that are profound scientific truths. The breath of life and the life is in the blood. I never thought about it that way. Grandpa, my girlfriend Vicky told me that what God really gave to Adam was an immortal soul. Is that true? No, Charlene, that's not what the Bible says. When Adam received the breath of life, he became a living soul. And the meaning of the word soul is a living being. He could see, he could hear, he could taste, he could smell, he could think. Prior to receiving the breath of life, he was, so to speak, just so much clay, molded into a certain form and, and lifeless, something like what you did make today. But when God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, he became alive and animated a living soul. And the Bible shows that not only men, women, and children are living souls, but the animals also are living souls. It just work. It does cut your eyes. What? Your animal? It doesn't work for us. Only God can give life. And to remember this is one of the most important lessons to keep in our mind all our lives. Father, I told the children many times that only God can create life. And I know that is true. Gramps, I noticed that the children were saying, and that the Bible does say, that when God breathed into Adam the breath of life, that he became a living soul. Just what does that mean? Well, briefly, it simply means that uniting the breath of life with the perfect organism, which God had created, resulted in a living being. God did not give Adam a soul. He became a soul. A soul that was made up of an organism animated by the breath of life. But, Grandpa, Adam didn't continue to live, did he? No, Charlene, but he could have continued living had he been obedient to the law of God. You see, God created a wonderful garden in which he provided food for his newly created humans, but they were forbidden to eat of one of the trees in the garden called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil with the warning that if they did eat of this tree, they would die. It's quite a long story, but briefly stated, our first parents did partake of this forbidden fruit with the result that they were driven from their garden home and they began to grow old and ultimately they died. Grandpa, is that the reason why everybody today is dying? And why Dad had to die? Yes, Arby, that is the reason. In the Bible we're told that in Adam all die. Gramps, doesn't that same text say something about all being made alive in Christ? Levon, I'm glad you remember that. That's an important text. It says, as in Adam all die, even so, in Christ shall all be made alive. This is the wonderful hope of life that is held out to all in the Bible. It is described in the Bible as a resurrection of the dead. And someday we'll all see your dad again. Just like the song is singing about Adam and a resurrection. Indeed so, honey. And I'd like to hear it now. Let's all sing it. Father Adam ate the apple and he led us into sin. Mother Eve and him had no idea what they led the whole world in. Ever since they disobeyed God's voice and listened to Satan's lie, not a human being has lived that wouldn't die. But we'll meet, but we'll meet in the resurrection. But we'll meet, but we'll meet in the resurrection. 
But we'll meet, but we'll meet in the resurrection When the church is gone up yonder with our Lord Jesus came one day, was born near two thousand years you see And he gave his life for Adam, no I am for you and me What a plan God has for mankind made his precious promises In the Holy Bible, God's own signature but we'll meet, but we'll meet in the resurrection. But we'll meet, but we'll meet in the resurrection. But we'll meet, but we'll meet in the resurrection. When the church is gone up yonder with our Lord. How refreshing to be reminded of the glorious hope of the resurrection. May we thank the Bible family for sharing some of their thoughts with us. One of the points I picked up in following the program is that the great variety of species found in the animal kingdom did not develop by chance, but through the guidance of a supreme intelligent creator, and that man himself is not a product of evolution. Friends, we would like to send to you the little book entitled Three Keys to the Bible. This revealing little book presents ten lessons pertaining to God and his characteristics. First, there is a God. And then, God revealed in animal life. God revealed in man. The Creator's wisdom. God's eternal justice, the Creator's love, our all-seeing God. God hears and cares, the Almighty God and the glory of God. All these lessons are yours simply for the asking. They will be mailed to you free and without obligation, simply ask for three keys to the Bible. Just the two words, three keys, will do, and this revealing little book concerning the Creator and His Word, the Bible, will be mailed to you. Simply ask for the three keys. This program has been brought to you by the Dawn Bible Students Association. And now, until we see you again, goodbye, and may God bless you.